Hey everyone. All right, we are here. Candid Conversations with Coach D. All right, let me get to my spot. Hello everybody, hello everybody. This is Coach D. This is Candid Conversations with Coach D. So before we get started, everybody, please go and share this live. Share it, share it, share it. I apologize for the tardiness, but guess what? We do everything in excellence. We wanted to make sure that we could bring you the best, best, best production that we could. So please make sure you go ahead and share right now. I'm going to give everybody about 30 seconds to please go ahead and share. <laughs> there you go. It there it begins. All right. What are we sharing? We are sharing this live. Please go ahead and get ready. Everybody share it. This is going to be an amazing show on today. We are excited about this one. I am excited. So share it, share it with all your friends, with your family, with everybody. All right, keep sharing, keep sharing. We are almost ready. All right. Okay, so we are live right now. All right. So listen, everybody, this is Candid Conversations with Coach D. This is a special edition called Family Matters. All right. And so I have the special privilege of today interviewing my family. So as everybody knows, I am married to Chris Davis. This is Christopher Davis. This is my husband. Now, let me give you a disclaimer. This family is, com they are a bunch of comedians as well. So if you hear us laughing, talking, if you hear us um, yelling at our kids, don't mind us. This is what we do on a regular, okay? <laughs> so we just want to give you that disclaimer before we start. Um, but I just want to introduce, I want to let everybody introduce themselves again. I am Demetri Davis. This is Coach D, Candid Conversations with Coach D. And we're going to let everybody go and introduce themselves. Now, as you can see, we have somebody that has joined us on the Zoom. So we're going to give him a chance to introduce himself first. We have our brother, my brother-in-law, all the way from Los Angeles, California. Hey, hey. 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 What's up, Jay? Hello, What's up? Yeah. Hey. No, my hi, baby boy, Jay. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. All right, all right. No. I was trying to talk, and uh, it, it was muted. <laughs> Please go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm uh I'm the youngest brother of uh all of these beautiful people here with uh my brother, my oldest brother Rodney as well. James, aka Jamie, Jay, got a lot of nicknames, whole lot of stories, but uh yeah, I'm the youngest, youngest boy of the group of the family. Jamie! Jay, Jay. <laughs> Jemaso? 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 Oh you so light. You do just. <laughs> okay. You, you see that this family is definitely funny. So this is Jamie Davis, James Davis. So let's do this. Let's, um, because this is going to be a second question, but let's start right here and let everybody introduce themselves. Starting right here. I'm Nikki, the oldest girl. I'm Angie, the youngest girl. I'm Kim, the middle girl. That's we're doing gender gender girls. <laughs> because she wants us to do gender. I am Coach D. I'm just here to interview, but I am the sister, sister-in-law. Okay. This uh, is Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the father. Uh, the father. Uh, the father. Uh, 
I am your mother. And I am Georgia Davis, Mama G. Mama! The mama. Mama, 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 mama G. Mama! And I'm Chris Davis, the one, the only. Thank God. <laughs> Is one. That's it. Thank God. I have one that is missing. Um, well, actually, sorry, everybody. Um, we have one that is missing. We have, um, well, two that are missing. We have Shamika. Yeah, she's um, in on assignment at her job in North she's, Carolina. Right. Oh, in North Carolina. And then we have Rodney Davis. He's in Orangeburg, the South eldest. Carolina. He's um, he's probably Rodney. watching. Yes, Hi, Rodney. 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 Yes. Um. He was having a little technical difficulties getting on. Um, and then there was one other brother, but he is now deceased. And that More. was- Love you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we are ready to get started. So here's my first question, everybody. If you have questions, please put them in the comments. Uh, we would love to have, answer some of your questions if we have time. But here is my first question, because every time this topic comes up, there is a little bit of a debate. Uh -oh, um, so I want to go ahead for and ask this question. Um, who is the oldest? No, you're not the oldest. That really? depends. Is it per Rodney age? Davis is Rodney the oldest. Davis. Uh, no, which, 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 okay, we know Rodney Davis is the oldest. Okay, by age. Who, by who? age. But who is the oldest? Who was the boss? Who was in charge? Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Now, how the two of them got their hands up? But three. three of us. Wait a minute, three? Yeah. We're all in you charge. Guys. No, 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 no. Here it is. No, here it is. I'm going to give it to you, D. You ready? I'm going to give it to you straight. Jake, Jake, explain it. No, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Nikki, try, Nikki was the boss of Chris. Yeah. Kim was the boss of me. Yeah. And Angie was the boss of mom and daddy. Yeah, I was the boss of mom and daddy. <laughs> it was boss of and then, and then, of course, I wasn't trying to feel Kim, and Chris wasn't trying to feel Nikki. So, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of bosses. We have, our, we have our we have our camera crew coming in. We're we're working on something, but keep going. So he was saying that I was the boss of Chris. Yep. Well, well, you was the boss of everybody, but you and Chris. Yeah. He just, it's okay. You almost fifty years old. Why, okay. why are you bossing me? I think he just let people think that he. They're bossing me because oh. I want to be bossed. <laughs> well, that's a good thing that he wants to be bossed. Like, yeah. That's a good thing. Like a good big brother. No, Jay. No. Yeah, Jay. and then Chris, Chris, Chris bossed me. I was the boss of us. Yeah, Chris. Did without me. bossing me, Chris yeah. bossed me without bossing me. He just like just. Follow me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, That's what it was. Well, nobody else would listen to him, so I guess. Okay, your mom, when you would leave home and go do the thing, you know, go to work, mom and dad, yes. who would you leave in charge? Nikki. Nikki. Yes. But who would try to take over? Chris. No. Who <laughs> <laughs> was there? when you were there a little bit, when you were there initially. When y'all was little? You were yeah, little. No, you were little, but my mom never thought that we was little. Like, yeah. by that time, high school, I was... Okay. But in any case, Nikki thought she ran things. And she did. Because mm. I let her broom, back cleaner. You can have it! You can have it! <laughs> she was... Okay, so let me ask this question, Mama. Who was the most rambunctious and who was the more quiet, settled one? Can you... What you think, Pop? Now that's a throw up. That's a choice up. I don't know who would be the quietest. Kim. Kim and Nikki. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Were... Kim would be the quietest. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's, it had less mouth out of her than anyone else. Okay. So who had the most mouth? That's easy. Angie. <laughs> that's right there. Angie. I just came at a, at a bad time in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you taking all the blame? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> okay, so mom, tell us about this. We wanna we wanna know. Um tell us mom. So were all of the kids playing? 
plan plan oh no oh, okay because angie is the, how old were you when you had angie 39 39 was years not old plan. not planned not planned i'm not supposed to be here guys now was everybody else kind of planned or just kind of happening you were like okay cool but you did y'all didn't play was it kind of surprised when angie came yes very much so I was so surprised <laughs> when I went to get my test. I was a little disappointed. Wait a minute. Say that I fell out at the coming part. Say it one more time, Mom. They when they told me I was pregnant, I fell out. Where were you going to the doctor for? Was you I going, going to the doctor for? Yeah. Just a checkup. For a checkup. Wow. So you were going for a checkup and get there. Uh, and you find out. Yeah, because I, I felt sick and I didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And we hadn't planned to have any more children. We already had a house food. So, I mean... And when she told me that, mm -hmm. that was it. Wow. Seriously. Rock your world. Now. It did. <laughs> what did y'all kids say? What did y'all say when she comes home at age 39 and tells y'all, I'm pregnant? She didn't tell them. She didn't oh. tell us. Well, she, why? Well, my, my, I told my older son. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because he called me when I had just, I didn't go to school that day. I didn't, didn't go to work. And I was home. I just got home from the doctor. And I had to go straight to baby because it was such a shock. So he calls me and said, Mom, I need you to go to this person's house. I said, why? He said, I'm in a predicament. And he told me what it was. I'm in that same predicament. He said, Mama, what are you doing? I said, I'm mad. I have love and what are you doing? <laughs> and he was the first one I told him. Wow. Yes, my oldest son. Brandon knew. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's how Marcus and Angie are like brothers and brothers sisters. Yes, they are. Yeah. My wow. son and my baby is three weeks apart. Wow. wow. Now that's a little bit gross. Yeah. Man. That's a little bit what? A little bit gross. Yeah. <laughs> they grew up like sisters and brothers. They sure did. Yes. So here's one of the questions that I want to ask the parents. Um, with having how many kids in the house? Seven. Seven. So seven kids in the house. Seven plus. Yeah, seven plus. right. Right. And, yeah. So oh, Jamie, oh, yeah. it had yeah. been. So Jamie, yeah. tell me why you said seven plus. Well, it was the seven of us, and then we had cousins, and then we had cousins yes. that we didn't know was cousins, and then we had close family members who we thought was cousins. Yeah. So <laughs> I felt we we come from a large family, regardless. So it was it was seven plus, which everybody was still treated. Like one big happy family, so. So here's one of the questions that I have. So was this because your family was like a family that serves, and you guys, um, you guys took kids in, yes, and you um foster kids yes. or just kids that you know needed something? Right. Is that what yeah. you guys? Yeah. Did? yeah, and we were certified um, foster parents. Certified also. foster parents. Yes. Yeah. So here's the thing, everybody that's watching that I find so amazing is um that they start their mom and dad used to take kids in but the amazing thing is that this i don't think they necessarily made it a tradition but their family this is something that they still do this is something that they still do i mean from not just bringing kids but people in homes i can remember pastor jay and them having people staying with them or um if anybody that's watching knows pastor nikki um nikisha tate and her husband um heenan tate they just adopted legally babies. Babies. How old are they? Four <laughs> and <laughs> four and seven years old. And mind you, their kids are grown. The oldest is twenty one. No, no. no. So they the baby girl. The oldest is um, twenty twenty seven. Wow. The oldest is 26. 25, 26, 27, 28. And then 23. 23. As far as more. Mm -hmm. Right. And then 21. Wow. Right. And right. so that means you guys are empty nesters. Were. Empty nesters. Supposed to be. Okay. And they have now. Got babies again. Got babies again. <laughs> Build it back up. Yes. What, right. a, what an outstanding genius plan that was. What right. <laughs> now, I can, I can also remember times when Angela, when yes. she's. Taking in, she yeah. had kids that was yeah. living with her baby, yes. our baby, yes, and was raising them. And um, yeah. now also Kim and her husband, right. they have a son, 
Um, how old is Daniel? Turn thirteen next week. Wow. Thirteen next week. Since he was two months old. Okay. Since he was Danny two. Both. He's really your cousin. Cousin, right? Because that's my niece's son. Like, yes, yeah, so really your cousin, but he's your son. Mm -hmm. And now my husband and I, we have a sixteen-year-old yes. that's really yes. our that's really our cousin, but he's our son. Yeah, yeah. right. So, so he was a child, a baby. Since he was yes. Two. So that's something that I find amazing about this family is through all the kids and all the people that was always been in their house. It's something that they can that they continue to do. But what I wanted to ask the parents was being that you had seven kids in the home, um, you guys seemed very close when it came to disagreements, arguments, fights. I don't know. What was your what was your, what was your stance and what was your rule as it came to fighting? And what would you make mm. them do, not do? What What did you guys do? Well, the first thing um, I would do with them, I would explain to them, look, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> fight each other. You fight, fight for each other. Each for each other. other. Okay. Yeah. 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 Still that, and I kept it still in that, and still that. They had little, little arguments and things, but nothing serious. Right. Because they knew the standard was you don't fight each other, you fight for each other. That's right. So it was never any serious, and I guess that's why they're so close. No serious, you know, altercations or anything like that. Okay. No. Now, go ahead, Pop. No, we never, in the time, we never did a group that would fight or right. yeah. disagreement. Mm -hmm. Now, here's my question. I remember you saying that sometimes if y'all got in arguments, what would you make them do? What did they have to do if they got in arguments? They had to get on their knees together, hold hands, oh, and pray, pray together. together. Uh -huh. Jesus. Yep. What they had to do. Most when we most. got caught fighting. Yeah, when oh. we got caught. <laughs> we went down to let Rex. <laughs> they went down to leave. Then they start a little Oh, space. so y'all like to fight when she leave. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Of course, they didn't do it. That's not, you had to worry about that. You had somebody to look out. Where yeah, kill the boys. <laughs> what did you say, um, James? <laughs> I said, the only thing is you had to have somebody to look out. Yeah. yeah. You, you saw either daddy truck coming or mama truck, mama car coming. But the only thing with that is we had one snitch in the family. Oh, who was the snitch? Who was that? <laughs> who was, who was I'm looking snitch? right at her. She, she knows who she is. <laughs> Angie. <me>? Angie. <laughs> Yeah, I thought Nikki was a nigga was a snitch. No, well, yeah, yeah. Nikki, Nikki would tell if we didn't do our chores. Thank you. We didn't listen to her. I'm gonna tell mama. Nobody listen to me, and she go slam the door. You wanna run away? Mm. So I grab my house. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. She was supposed to do that. Yeah, she, she didn't did. know the code yet. She was too young to understand that. Let them do whatever they're yeah. gonna do. Long as they don't she break everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can remember one time that my brothers put me in a Tupperware box and told me, let's play hide and seek because I told them, no tummy to hush. And they didn't come back and I was sweating real hard <laughs> and my clothes were wearing. Chris, Chris, I, Chris, I think we went to Henry house and played basketball. I, was I, was Robin, I think we went to Robbie house. And they made me like, hurry up and get dressed. Go show mama your wet clothes. I didn't tell that time. We were God. We, we were smart. We had our own. <laughs> We were responsible now. We was just playing. That's all. Oh, and yeah. And there were, when they had the arguments um, between Jamie or somebody and, and me and them sit together. Yeah. That was Jamie and Kim. look at each other. Mm -hmm. Jamie and Kim. Other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So y'all yeah. had to sit together and just. Oh, yeah. Hold oh, hands. Hold oh, hands. Oh, oh, hands. Oh, oh, hug. Oh. That's right. And you couldn't say nothing. You just sat there and hugged hug until they other. tell you. Yeah. Hugging and crying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> So who would y'all say was the disciplinarian between them? I'm sure that the methods were different. Both. And? Both of them. Both. Yeah. Now, who, it, de it depends on who you ask. <laughs> you didn't judge? want daddy's, the, yeah. the, you didn't want the, the judgment. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mama was more of the disciplinary. D Dad was the, man, I don't know. Dad was that tornado, that hurricane when he come through. Just, you were the mama. Yeah. Or daddy the beach. He had a judgment. Yeah. He be terrible. <laughs> yeah. oh. And he didn't do that all. He didn't do it all. No, he didn't. No. But oh. when he did, yeah, he it right. goes down in history. <laughs> Heard all. Yeah. Been yelled at, she tired of fussing. Yeah. And when she said, Glenn, let me take you. So um, we talking about um, 
family matters because as we can see, family does matter. We talked about who's the oldest, who did we thought was the boss. We talked about the fact that this family really, really, really loves people and they brought people in, they've adopted people, they've made them their own, whether it was family members or people on the outside. Um, and we're talking about family matters because it really does, family really does matter. And we can see that this family still does that to today. And we talked about how arguments and disagreements were settled through prayer, through holding hands, um, through you know having to sit and look at each other. So here's something that I want to ask, and I want each one to go through and give the funniest story that you possibly have. Listen, this this family could have a reality show. Okay, I have sat and watched this family talk about the fact of how they went to the grocery store in the station wagon moving. Oh, I've yeah. had. I I mean, I've had stories <laughs> of. I've had stories of um, Pastor J being, of James being scared of clowns or the dog and running around in the and midgets. <laughs> You gonna tell that one? Yeah, yeah. Oh Lord. Yes. And so I'm looking for Jay every afternoon. Well, this afternoon there was a little boy in a wheelchair, and my brother Jay doesn't do people that that age. He yeah, had a lot of phobia. I mean, little people, anybody that clowns. Clowns. So the little boy sat to the front, and when Jay he got, he realized the boy in a wheelchair was on the bus. He ran. <laughs> <laughs> so the bus left him. So he I remember that. Wow, you wow. Yeah. And My so family. when I came, when Mama came home, she said, "Why are you home by yourself?" And I was crying like I'm scared <laughs> because Jamie saw a boy in a wheelchair and he didn't stop running. I don't know why he ran, but he just took off and he didn't <laughs> never come home. So Mama called Miss Wallace's house and she said. Is Jamie there? Is Jamie there? Jamie, you got one hour to make it home. Now, you live so far down there. Yeah. Oh, my God. You live down the Cranley Road near the I interstate. Yes, like we live way in the cut. So I'm looking outside. I'm worried about Jamie because Jamie's close to me at that time. I'm like, Jamie better make it home in one hour. It was the interstate. He came down the road. We saw smoke. It's smoke. <laughs> ah. I was coming from his shoes. And he had water dripping. Can you give me some water, please? Please, can you give me some water? Mom, go bring me. Mom, go bring me. I said, just hurry up. Tell him, like, hurry up. Just go. You got to go on. But it was funny because smoke was really coming from his head. It was, literally, it was. And, and my feet was burning from them Chuck Taylors. Said that he sweat a lot, too. Yep. Wow. Yeah, so. OK, so who's next? Jay. Jay, please tell us the funniest. I hope somebody tells the story about the dog. I'm, uh, I'm gonna let somebody else tell that one. I'll let somebody else tell that one. Okay. Okay, I have one. It's well, it's, it's funny, but it, it wasn't funny. So this will go. This will tie into like my mama, mama taught us, mom and daddy taught us that like me and Kim, we were honestly we were cats and dogs for the most part until we 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 liked to listen to the same music and see who could write the lyrics the fastest. Remember that? Yes. <laughs> oh, it's like right? Yeah. So this was we. I think we were at, we were in elementary school, Kim, and you remember they had the uh, they were remodeling uh, Whitaker, I think it was, and they had the um, the uh, the mud around the school, but they had the hard rocks, the mud rocks. Remember that? Yeah. And remember uh, one of my classmates? You like 
Jamie, stop. I ain't gonna listen. <laughs> so long story short, I got hit in the head. I got hit in the head with um by one of the rocks in my and as a matter of fact, I had to get my first set of stitches is up there somewhere. There's somewhere. Um, but the funny thing about it was at first, Kim was Kim was mad. And people know if Kim get mad, you just go have to hold on to the mute till it calm down. So I was like, Kim, calm down. And then she saw the blood drenching. <laughs> Kim, Kim went from, boy, you mess with my brother, this thing the third. She looked over at me. She was like, Mama gonna kill you. Mama gonna kill you. <laughs> and I was feeling fainted, right? I wasn't feeling fainted because I was bleeding. I was feeling fainted because I felt like mom and dad was gonna be me. So Kim was sitting in the carpool lane, holding me like a baby sitting there rocking, patting my head, telling me, Jamie, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. I got you. I was like, okay. <laughs> but that was one of my funny moments. But but that I mean, it wasn't funny then. And then of course I didn't get a beat, and I got busted at for you know doing that. But uh, yeah, that that was funny to me. That was funny. It's plenty of them, but that was one of the funny moments because I remember Kim. And she was just rocking me and patting my head and wiping the blood and crying. First it went from "Mama gonna kill you" to "It's gonna be all right." <laughs> Wow. That was fun. So we've had Jamie and we've had Angie. So who's next? I can go next. Okay. Oh my God. So here's a funny one. Um, so of course, I was not the oldest in age, but I was oldest by mature grandma because I was a girl or whatever case. Chris was there sometimes, but he was not there. So um mama had a rule that okay, she would always tell me this is what needs to happen, whatever, whatever. And I don't understand how mama would know if we had the TV on. You could not rush and turn the TV off. We weren't smart enough to know the TV would be on. But right. she like not when she got in and we ran upstairs. It's almost like she would walk in the door and know the TV was on. Who had the TV on? Whatever. So we had a, a thing. So Chris sometimes, he because he was the oldest in age, he would get upset about the fact that I'm the oldest <laughs> yeah. and he what to do. And sometimes it would not be about telling him what to do. It'd be like, okay, Chris, mama is going to be home in a little bit. You might want to wash the dishes. Yeah. Always was arguments about washing the dishes, not just with him, with, with everybody. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, like, because oh. everybody had a night, whatever. And I'd be yeah. like, Chris, you know, Chris, Chris had this thing. He had, he would cut out like a thousand people toys, a thousand pieces of toy soldiers. Yeah. And he get oh. That mindset. Leave me alone. And he would be number yes. one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And he would cut him, and you would go in his room and his whole entire floor, and you could not walk in the fort mm -mm. because you had infantry and all that. I knew people. how to walk in it. Yes. But um, so <laughs> he would get stuck, and so mom would be like, nice. have it done because what they thought I would just be whatever, but mama would get me too mm -hmm. if it wasn't done. So I was like, Chris, you need to wash the dishes. Wash the dishes, Chris. All right, then when it get pressed, he mad. You, I'm the oldest, you can't tell me what to do. And I remember Kim was like, Chris, you know, because then Chris get whatever. So mama came home, it was not done. And mama was like, why are the dishes not washed? Now she would know it's because the person who's supposed to wash were not washing. That was not mm -hmm. enough. It was like a whole interrogation. And yes. she, everybody, mm -hmm. why weren't the dishes washed? Um, Nikki, why the dishes not washed? Mama, I told Chris. Chris, no, you didn't. Kim, mm -hmm. <laughs> why the dishes not washed? And we'd be like, why is she asking Kim? Because she ain't got to wash the dishes. It didn't matter. She'd go on down the line. I think Angie would be exempt, kind of. She mm -hmm. wouldn't, you know, she wasn't old enough. Right. And so Mama said, Chris. And then Mama like, did she remind, tell him to wash the dishes? And Kim was like, Kim didn't really like to tell, but Chris would be so... <laughs> attorney kind of person he would like <laughs> he likes the dialogue yeah, me yes god she gotta be kidding me <laughs> oh, and mama was trying to tell him something chris would not shut up mama be like chris i told you be quiet mama no so and so and so say and we were just sitting there because we was like okay can this please get over she took the um, rice pan rice steamer no the steamer had the small pan in the water she took that thing and mama Mama stopped talking, you like, okay, but Chris was so riled up. He ain't realized it. And mama went up under that thing. Uh, I think it was he was supposed to, it was sitting on the counter because it was supposed to be washed. And she had bam him in the head. <laughs> and the pot had a dig in it. Sure did. 
still has that pocket. And it still has that big pocket. And it was the only thing that would stop him from talking. At the end of the day, it was like wash the dishes. Yes. And then that I mean it was funny to us because we was like, did she just get off on <laughs> mid sentence? I was I was about to get my closing arguments into. Yes, oh, I she had a closing argument. He did. Yeah. So that was kind of that was uh, yeah. 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 And the funny thing is that she still has the rice pot yes. to that. We're still that cooking in it. I kept it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> So, all right, who's next? Kim, tell us your funny story. Uh, let me see. I think um, one of the funniest ones I could, well, we got to talk about, all of us can talk about be a pep or drink about the pep. Yes. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Is this a station wagon? Oh, yeah. Yes. In front yes. Of the I love so, the story. I don't know, Facebook land, how many of y'all have seen it, but we had one of those old school station wagons that had the seat the turned back on the back. back seat. Ah. <laughs> nine people. And you, nine people, that's a band. And you look, did it have panels on it? Yes, yeah, it had panels panel on it. Panel they called it wood grain. Wood okay. grain, yes. It was wood like wallpaper, though. It wasn't. Okay, let's hear this. Let's hear this, Kim. We were, um, D was we were very creative. We didn't have a whole lot, so we always would come up with these things to do. And so, one, one of the things we used to do, first of all, if we were riding and you was in the back, back, oh, you had a different you, you had a different, you had to wear it to everybody <laughs> 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 behind you and all kind of stuff. But we would go to the grocery store, and there's no way Mama really? was gonna take so all of us. And, no, and if we knew that, store. do not what ask to go in the store. No. If you, so yeah. they, windows was down and these were back in the days where the windows would be down yeah, and, can't can't find it it yeah. and every now and then we didn't really have cable like that but every now and then you could catch some like the news and you would see commercials, commercials. and that's when we saw that commercial i remember the next week commercial too creamy white yeah. and i was like oh my god that's so beautiful but then <laughs> they had a dr pepper commercial mm. Be your pepper drink Be your pepper, pepper drink dr pepper Be pepper doc Chris started. Yeah. And Chris started. He started so, rocking. Chris started rocking the car. So Chris started rocking and he realized that when he rocked back and forth, the, car, the was car was moving back and forth. And so we was like, what? Yeah. So I always would follow Chris. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Chris started rocking and Jamie too. And we start rocking. And we was all saying. And the car just a shit. And the car just went. <laughs> He started to stop. He started to be a pepper. Drink a dog to pepper. He was like, and then you had to decide who was going to do the last one. Do the last one at the lowest point. He was going to be like, no, let me go, let me go. Be a pepper. Drink a dog to pepper. We were all doing it. Yeah. Everybody. Hey, y'all remember, uh, y'all remember uh, Friday nights. Friday nights, um, Daddy would come home. Right on. Everybody wash up. Georgia, make sure them turn wash up and get dressed. Yep. We already knew what time it was. Well, we Dry down. <laughs> yes! Hush up it. Now, Jamie, say what he said to us before we, we even got here. So <laughs> we, would, we would pull up. <laughs> Daddy would park the car. OK, now. <laughs> <laughs> you go up in here? <laughs> You go up in here, don't ask for a dag burn thing. George, you're gonna order off the menu. And what she order, your deadbeat butts better eat all of it. Yes, sir. <laughs> not, not, not. And when you go don't in there, they have these big old beautiful aquariums. Yeah. Yeah. It's tempting, because you wanted to touch it. And let's say, yeah. not open your door until, like sometimes he would turn the car off and everybody just be sitting yeah, there about, what it felt like, 30 minutes, but it was only about a few minutes. I mean, that was just to respect because you yeah. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't get out to the old folk open the door. Like Jay said, and but, but what was the last thing he said when we got out of the car, shut the door, and what he said, when you go in here, don't what? What did he say, Jay? Don't, look don't ask me. for nothing. Don't touch nothing. Because you ain't getting Because you ain't getting nothing. <laughs> and don't look at nothing. And don't look at nothing. And then mama come in with her last two cents and y'all whole hands and walk together. It's 9,000 of us like, well, how are we going to get? How can we not look? And I was, so I was 
So you'll be walking in the restaurant like this. <laughs> Try it though. Try not to look at nothing. And I remember one time Jamie loved hush puppies. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There is somebody, uh, somebody yeah. said, someone please tell the cornbread story about oh, Jamie. There is little Jamie oh, cornbread. The cornbread. So, we can tell that. We can tell that. Oh, okay. all right. Oh, well, so, so every night we ate, it, <laughs> that mom and daddy would fuss at Jay, because yeah. Jay, like, he never ate before in his life. And then he even said, I was hungry. He'd be like, no, let me get, let me get, let me, I'm with this, I'm with this. And mom and daddy would fuss at him about, listen, stop worrying about everybody else's food, eat your food. Yeah. yeah. So one night, daddy got tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that, and mommy made cornbread that night. We might have spaghetti or soup or something, but she made a big pan of cornbread. Yeah. And Jamie was being greedy. Daddy said, ain't no way you just hungry. <laughs> yeah. I was hungry. But tonight. <laughs> Yo, since you would eat so much, sit your butt here and eat this whole pan of cornbread. And get a gallon of water. Uh-huh. And if y'all should have seen, Jay sweated with everything you did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trey was like, that. Yes, I'm gonna break your butt. I'll be so greedy. To the <laughs> and that joker said, I didn't have to eat that whole fan of cobra. He was about to throw up that. I wish you would. I wish you would. Oh, I wish you would throw up. Oh, you throw it up, man, and you gonna eat it up. you yeah. gonna eat it up. <laughs> and we just, we just walk in there, we be like, hurry up, Jay. Please, Please hurry up. Please. 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 You can Please. do it. Y'all just pick it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jay would eat his food fast just so he could come back and look at y'all black. Yeah, give it. You want that? You know, you want that. I used to have a lot of fun with my siblings because I ate slow. I always ate slow. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter. Yes, she did. She still She was the antagonizer. That's what this was. This story. (laughs) Right. And it would be so funny because every now and then, Daddy would bring us, um, or Mama, a candy bar or some type of candy or some type of snack home from the gas station. And boy, it's like, they were so like, it was so predictable. As soon as they get there, as soon as dinner finishes, they they gonna eat theirs. Oh yeah, especially Chris, he's like, (laughs) which one you want? You got a Snickers? What kind you got? You got some. And they would eat all theirs up. And I would just sit there and I'm Mm -hmm. like, Boy, they're going to eat all that. Like, they're not going to have nothing left. The later. <laughs> that was not why you No, he wasn't antagonized. Look at us. I would be like, man, how did they eat it so fast? How did they eat it fast? <laughs> no. I don't believe that. And I, I do. I, and I would be like, how y'all eat it so fast? Uh-uh. And Chris would be like this. I just put it in my mouth and eat it. So they would have to be done with all that. So I would take mine out. And I would be like, I'm still feeling a little bit full. I'm not sure. So <laughs> no, it ain't. No. No, you knew what you was doing. You knew we was going to eat ours up. Uh, and then you knew, especially me and Chris. We said, no, Chris would negotiate. I would be mad because then I would come from the standpoint of not sharing. <laughs> and you don't want to share. You'd be like, well, you ate all yours. Chris would be like, well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you something. And you'd be like, nope, I don't want that. What else you got? <laughs> I'd be like, man, this is a bunch of mess. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. oh, a piece oh, of candy. Man. I'll take a bite and I'll be like, I'm just so full. I'm I don't think I can right eat it. Like, I'm, I'm, not gonna eat more right now. I'm just going to save it for later. Mm-mm. And Chris would be like, well, Kim, you can just give it to me because I eat it. <laughs> <laughs> no, be like, I, no want- I want it. And I'll be like, oh, I don't know. Both of y'all want it. So, how do I tell? I do I do but here's the thing. Well, it's not it like no, she would eat a piece. No. She would do this before she ate it. Yeah. Man, I'm so <laughs> yeah. I think I want to eat. And nobody would really be paying I don't think I want to eat my candy bar until yeah. it got everybody's attention. Everybody be like, she don't want it. Yeah, I think I'm full. Mom, I don't, I think I'm full. I'm not going to eat my candy bar. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> and Jay and Chris, because I mean, we love candy bars. Somebody yeah. said, I'll give you 25 cents. Then yep. she, no. Wow. Then she okay. listened okay. to, yeah. it was yeah. it. <laughs> she would listen to the bar, and then she'd be like, I think I might eat it. Yeah, I I maybe, I'll I, save maybe, it. I'll maybe I'll save it. Maybe I'll save it. I'll save it. <laughs> maybe I'll save it. And then, and then it would end up, she would eat it. <laughs> no, I think I'm gonna eat it. Yeah. But Jay and Chris, they will fall for it every, every time. time. <laughs> so they're falling for the same thing yeah. over and over. Oh, sometimes I would give Chris 
Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I wish, yeah, sometimes. She 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 sneak. Cause so, I used to be full for real. I used to be full for real. And I was greedy for real. So <laughs> Kim Sharon, Kim Sharon would be half of this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. So peaceful. Oh, yeah, like, like, and then I look like, you have to pinch it off. So let me ask you a question. Watch so, this. So Chris. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Story. Um. I don't know. You know, we had a bunch of stuff. Like, yeah. The moon ride. I uh, oh. Oh. So Chris is going to tell the moon ride. Then Mama G is going to tell the uh, champ story about the dog. Okay. Moon ride or Tip City? Yes. Yeah. Moon ride or Tip City? No, Tip City. We thought we were getting robbed, but it was a rat in the house. What? Warwick. <laughs> oh, Talking about Warwick the rat? Yes. yes. And Champ killed it. Remember Champ killed that rat? Yeah. Oh, it, it Daddy a- threw it. Daddy threw it out there. I actually cried because he had thrown the rat to the dog. Nine or ten. Okay. Seven, so we can go uh, to Mama So, before so our family out. was a play family. Like we played together all the time. My okay. mom raised us. My our dad raised us when we were like we were together. We weren't like separate. So when they were work or we were home, we set the chairs up and we'd go on vacation. We put all of the chairs in a row. We have fake yeah. money. Ooh, or we play store. So we play office manager. Yeah. I mean, we did all this stuff. Like we were really yeah. tight together. So um, as we got older, we got bored, and so we would create this <laughs> I call the moon ride. Yeah. <laughs> and the moon ride was when the biggest one, generally me, will lay on my back. Oh, yes. <laughs> and my sisters would sit on my feet. <laughs> And then I would push them onto the bed and push them across the room. Now, we didn't have no mattresses all the time. Either. No. We, I don't know why we thought that was fun, but it was amazing how high we could get each other to go. And we would see how high we could push each other. It was just uh-huh. yeah. It was. We, and we knew we couldn't go out to bed every night, so we created the bed. We were not smart, but we had a lot of fun together. So we did the moon. <laughs> We did the moon ride. The other time is, is, is the, uh, the, the, the champ. Uh, so we lived in our house. We had a big field behind the house. Mm-hmm. And once in a while, a field rat, a field mouse would try to get into the house. Because like, especially winter time. Yeah. We hey, had, baby cat. Uh, but the, the, rat, the, the field mouse got in the house. And Ryan and Warren was in the house. And Warren was in the house. <laughs> and so... Uh, the, the, the field rat, we thought the way he was at the yelling and screaming and ran out the house that somebody broke in the house. So we all responded <laughs> to his response. Yeah, yeah. locking the door. Locking <laughs> doors and hiding everything. Oh, y'all locking it right Oh, yeah. 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 He was like, yeah. yeah, he was scared. Like, oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, he's running. He just, and we all locking the doors. Come to find out it was just a big rat that got in the house. And I mean, it was. <laughs> It was the size of the cat. Yeah, yeah, it was big, that big, because it's a big, big few behind us, but she gained in it. But that was a, yeah, that scared all of us, but that was funny. I didn't appreciate Dad and Rodney um, cutting my hair when I was little either. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and Rodney and Dad would cut our hair. It was bad. And we just had to go to school or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Hold still, you bet that move. Yeah, that was funny. Hold still, you bet that move. I didn't hand it off to Rodney. Go ahead, you do it for us. <laughs> So Jay, did they cut your hair too? Everybody, Everybody. Cut my hair. But I, I kind of graduated because um, by that time, Chris used to do like the, uh, the bank camps and things like that, military RTC. So I used to be with Daddy a lot. So Daddy used to he used to have different jobs. So he would take me to Alfonso. Remember Alfonso, Daddy? Yeah. Alfonso used to cut my hair. Now he used to mess it up too, but he wasn't as bad as Daddy. <laughs> Speaking of all. Yeah. We used to have a bowl cut. We used to give me that bowl, me and Chris, that bowl cut. We, we used to go and try and fix. Chris used to try and fix mine as much as he could because he's a fixer, but he didn't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to hear the champ story about the dog and Jamie yes. and getting into the house. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So Mama G, tell us. Every it's night from church. It's the funniest thing. We've always had a so we had first we had Laddie, Laddie. and then Laddie got killed by a car and we just mm-hmm. looked and everybody cried. I cried. He was a colleague. So I said, well, if we find another nice dog, we'll get one. So then we found J. 
down. And not knowing, Nikki was kind of scared of him. Yeah. And he was very, uh, just played for fun. Everybody, yes. we just loved him. Like Thor. He like Thor was very, just played for, played for, yeah. played for. Like to jump up so, on you. And... Like to jump on you and rub on you and run behind, run, run behind you, make you run behind them. So Jay was scared of him. So we told Jay, okay, you come to church. Everybody go, the kids in back. Jay, now when we get home, now you know Champ is going to come to the car. Mm -hmm. And Champ is going to jump up on us and want to play. Now, what we want you to do is don't pay Champ any attention. Now, when you get out the car, just go straight <laughs> for the door. Walk, just walk, walk, keep walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to do that. But <laughs> y'all say, keep walking. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> got to the house. We got out. Mingle got out. The girls got out. No, I mean, no. Jay was the one to look yeah, in. Yeah. Nick and Nick. Yep. Be like, yeah. all right. All right, y'all going to go Chris in. walk in the house. Yep. No problem. And, and Kim, Kim and Angie got the door. So, okay, we're going to leave the door. Yeah. We're going to leave, leave the door, door open. Y'all just keep on going in. Y'all just keep on walking. All right. Nick got out. She kept. She obeyed. She walked right on up the steps. So, maybe peep around the door. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he saw, I don't know why he started running. He started <laughs> running. I don't know. And I don't know. I was scared. Yeah. And he kept running. Running the tree. Running the tree. Running the tree. There was like Jay running the house. Go up. Come on, the kids at the door. Come, Come on, on, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> That though. I know, and he did. Jay would do so good. He would be half the way. Yep. And um, almost there. And it would be like something. Yeah, we need. To <laughs> All right, Jay. That's right. Just keep walking. He do good. But he would be looking out the corner of his eye, like, <laughs> like Jay. Don't worry about it. He coming. No, you know what it was. He would start walking a little bit faster. Oh, yeah. And when he start walking faster, Champ, champ tears up. To go. And then if he look at Champ, it's okay. Champ was go. Go. It's it's all. If we made eye contact, that was it. Like, ooh, and that's it. Okay. How about the Christmas parade? Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Orangeburg had some of the best parades. In the oh, world. Yes. Best but parade as we world. said previously, Jay, Jay was a little scared of the little parade. people. Little so people clowns. We would, if we would all have Clowns and little people. You stay by mama, stay by Nick, and stay by somebody. Yeah, you know they're coming, clowns yeah. are coming. Okay, I'm not scared of okay, clowns this particular day. He, Jay, the clowns are going to be out there. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm not scared of clowns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was like, Jay, they'll give out candy, too. Yeah, because like, they be watching, they'll throw candy in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I like candy. They're going to give me some candy. Jay! Today. Yeah. Clown with a bottle, they're going to give me some candy. And let me tell you okay. something, that clown came through on that parade. <laughs> <laughs> Jim went from first dime store, all the way, all the way down to the end of store gone. Jim was about three miles. Mama had to find out where they were. Where they were. He was trying to like, I was just going to give him some candy. So he come walking. <laughs> He's like, Jay, get the candy. So yeah. I'm like, tell him. <laughs> Come on, Jay. Tell him. Tell him. He's going to give me some candy. Yes. <laughs> it's like he was just going to give me some candy. Yeah. It would be like it kicked in. And, and he, he was gone. He was oh, gone. Oh, my God. I said, y'all see my, my little boy. I'm looking for my son. Yeah, he's going to a, a little boy. <laughs> So I, I gotta say this right. So we have like people don't realize we live in Orangeburg, but before Orangeburg, we lived in Edison, in um, Cadoba. Yeah, Cadoba. 
So that's what's cool. People don't know when we was young, we was babies, we was younger. We got pictures. Like we had horses. Yeah. 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 Um, I remember honest. riding it. Um, I remember daddy fussing the riding by getting thrown by the horse. I remember mm-hmm. people coming from our church mm-hmm. every Sunday after church. Yeah. Eat out in the country with us. Yeah. And try, um, people trying to ride a horse and getting bucked. Yep. Yeah. Um, I remember riding and driving a school bus in 12th grade. Yep. Yeah. And beat me because I used to run my mouth and talk junk because he was a bus driver. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so you used to talk junk like people were in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Can he play football too? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So he was making it happen at an early age. Yeah, right, right. He was. He had cars and everything. Yeah. 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 We had two riding lawnmowers. Yeah, right. I had to get two. Had his life on the Yeah. You don't touch the bike and touch my Yeah. So it sounds like, so we've talked about so many different things. We've talked about how you guys serve people. We've talked about the family core values of sticking together. You don't fight each other, but you fight for yeah. each other. Exactly. Uh, we talked about the, the Friday family trips, going to eat. We've talked about the fun and games you guys did. Talked about the, the horses and everything that you've had. And um, so before we end Candid Conversations with Coach D, I want to ask um, the parents. Um, in this generation, we have a generation, you know, not just the millennials, but just in general, in this generation, give us some good, solid advice um, to the parents that are watching. Um, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, but give us some good, solid advice as parents dealing with kids in this day and age of things that you did with your kids back then that will work now. Um, and just tell the, those that are watching or who will go back and watch this replay, give them something, leave the people with something that is tangible that they can take and say, you know what, I heard this on Candid Conversations with Coach D. As a parent, I'm going to incorporate this. Well, uh, one of the best things you got to realize is that we were like, we were like really together. Mm-hmm. And we were in a whole lot of misconfused and stuff. And we, but we came up, like you said, I brought up, like you said, that you know, uh, uh, when something was wrong in the family or something like that, we we work out, we pray about it or we do something, we read scripture, or we read put on prayer, something like that. Right. And work it out like that. Yep. And uh, But the generation now, these days, but during that time, I'll go back, during that time, we had that rule. We had rules. That's yes. Right. We had house rules. House rules. House rules. We had house rules. Church rules. Yeah. Church yeah. All of them was ran together. Okay. We know when you're not supposed to do something, you're supposed to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, what I see now, most in the generation now, these most kids are raising kids, raising themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever they want to do is okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In my house, in our house, Whatever you want to do, it wasn't okay. Mm-hmm. But we let them be kids, you know. Right. Yes. Like, you know, yes. Like kids were supposed to be. Right. But we had rules and regulations. But now, what I see now, most kids now are just on a free roll. On a free yeah. roll and do what they want to do. Do what they want to do. Right. So, from Pop Davis, he's telling this generation now, us parents now, you have to have house rules. Yeah. House That's rules, good. church rules, you have to have those rules. Mm-hmm. You have to set those boundaries in your house and let your kids, family know what it is that you expected them. You have to have expectations. Yeah. So that's good. Mom, what is what is what would you say? Um, I want to say this. Not only um, house rules, church rules, um, the society have rules. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have to obey. And then another thing I found out um, I experienced this in teaching. When you're raising children, you teach them, but then you got to do a lot of reteach. It's just like yeah. in the classroom teach and reteach. Teach, reteach. That's right. teach, teach and reteach. Teach, reteach, teach, reteach, and enforce. Yeah. These three things are very important. You can't take, okay, if all the kids, okay, you got Monday to wash dishes, you got Tuesday, you got Wednesday. Okay, if the Monday one, one Kind of don't you know don't wash dishes? Okay, reteach. Look, we set the rule. This is your night to wash dishes. You gotta do that. Mm-hmm. That's right. The next time they tell, uh-uh, you doing it. Yeah. Or else, or else there's gonna be consequences. Yeah. And everybody held them. Everybody was supposed to be held accountable. Everybody. When our kids, when we, 
I mean, when our kids were in kindergarten, we start them on five years old. Mm -hmm. You start the school, there are rules That's right. that you're going to do. When you get out the bed, mm -hmm. you're going to make your bed. Up. Even though we know that five-year-old can't really make up a bed and pillow. No, you're going to pull your cover up, turn it back, and yeah. you're going to put your pillow. Mm -hmm. And back then, during that time, we didn't wash clothes like every day. I wash right. clothes twice a week. So your pajamas, you you gonna you gonna wear those Two pajamas days, more days. than one night. Yeah. Yes. So you up. take your pajamas, fold them up, put them mm -hmm. under your pillow. Mm -hmm. So when when the, the next night you know where your clothes are. That's exactly same right. thing. That's you wash right. clothes. You teach them how to wash clothes. You teach them how to separate. Okay. Fold up your clothes. Put them in the drawer. Mm -hmm. Anything on the floor is trash. That's right. Don't leave your clothes around on the floor. On the floor you got a drawer right. and you got a closet. You got hangers. Hang them up. And you need to start reinforcing that young. When they start right. in school, they need to start taking these responsibilities. Because exactly it's right. gonna it's gonna pay over all through life. That's it's, right. it's gonna go over. Mm -hmm. You know? So you got to do it. So we've heard give house rules, church rules as well, but we've also heard teach, reteach, and reinforce. And what it sounds like to me that they're saying is you have to be patient with kids. Yes. Of course. And all kids are different, but you have to teach reteach and reinforce because you are teaching them you are imparting and so the only way that they learn is if you teach reteach yep. reinforce on yep. um, processes mm -hmm. um so i think that that is i think that's really good so my next um my next question is um i want each sibling to take about 30 seconds and tell this generation as being siblings in a house together um being close together or even if you are not in the house with your siblings um, and there, your siblings may be at another pl in, in another place, you know, because Jamie is in another place and I see that there are some things you guys do together. Um, you have like messenger and you guys have video calls sometimes, but I want each sibling to take 30 seconds um, if you can and just give siblings mm -hmm. brothers and sisters a piece of advice that they can take from this, this generation can take on what it will take to remain close as brothers and sisters. Let's start with you, Chris. Um, to stay close as brothers and sisters. Something so, that you even learned growing up, what was instilled in you that you keep today? Um, um, to be honest, it takes a real commitment to stay close. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not automatic. Mm -hmm. As you get older, you get kids, you get married, things of that nature. You have to decide to put the energy and effort into staying in each other's lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that as we've gotten older, um, we reach out to my oldest brother, Rodney Moore, Mm -hmm. um, because he was older than us. Mm -hmm. And um, I think as you get older, you have to put more energy into mm -hmm. staying close with your siblings because we become parents, we yeah. become grandparents. Mm -hmm. uh, but that never takes away the responsibility we have to stay close mm -hmm. as brothers and sisters. So put the energy into maintaining those relationships. Yeah. You got to. You got to. You can't outgrow each other in terms of brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You got to make time and space for each other. That's good. Um, Nikisha? And in thinking of that, I, I did all that. And if you ever wonder, um, consider um, the closeness or, you know, because sometimes, I mean, true, we all lived in different states at one time. You think about what you came up doing. Like they said, we there was a time in our life where we had an abundance or it, I don't think yeah. we were rich, we weren't, but we had stuff. And there were a lot of times in our life when we had nothing. And if you don't remember anything, remember the times that you stuck together and remember that, and that will help you keep the commitment of being together and understanding that, you know, the things that brought you up, how you came up is what made you who you are and that your children can also partake in what you, um, you know, partake in what you've learned, those core values, because we had a lot of funny stories, a lot of crying stories, a lot of whatever, but they are core values that we learned that made us have our homes open to other people, mm -hmm. our hearts open to other people. And so you cannot fail to forget that because family is forever. I mean, you know, again, the nature of relationships sometimes change based on where you are in the family, but you are giving that by God. That's right. And, and it's something you should cherish. Mm -hmm. James, give us, um, Jay, give us what you, what you would say. I would say, uh, First and foremost, to um, uh, piggyback off of Chris and Nick, like uh, it's, it's important that, like he says, you can't outgrow family. 
Um, and like Nick, sticking with the core values, um, understanding um, that family is not really going to change. We're always going to be there. I think, uh, especially for for us as siblings, the one, and I'll say this because I'm, I mean, I'm thousands of miles away from y'all, but Angie does a. a, a me personally, I think she does a fantastic job making sure that she communicates with everybody and everybody is communicating, no matter how the hustle and bustle of life and, and ministry and, and family and all that stuff, just making sure that we keep that connection. And I personally think that it's important. I think um, I've grown over the years because I just by nature, I can isolate myself. I, I've always been that way, but all the laughing and joking and all that stuff. I'm cool with just being where I am and who I am. So making sure that this stays is uh, is of the utmost importance. And, and to this generation is to make sure that me and uh, me, we teach our kids this. And I mean, the same as how we, were, we grew up. Um, when you walk out of this house, you represent yourself, you represent your brother, you represent your sister. So make sure that you protect one another at all costs. Like mama said, you fight for each other, not against each other. Mm -hmm. So that I think for this generation, it's important that they, they understand that, especially with a lot of distractions that they may have, because back in the day, we didn't have cell phones. We barely had a house phone. Um, certain nights we watched television. So it wasn't that we were distracted by things of life. You watch what was, what was there, what will, what was on television, that's what you watched, but now it's totally different. So just making sure that you you have time and find time and, and enjoy the time that you have for one another and with one another. That's good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Don't go out family. Um Angie. Okay. <laughs> I've and I've been thinking about this really like the last two weeks. I really like the fact that we're accountable to one another. Like, we don't have a problem with saying, you know, Kim making a little, I'm home, Kim. Maybe she just having a right now. But we hold each other accountable, but it's never to the point of like, um, I don't like you no more, don't talk to me no more ever in life. Right. Yeah. Say what it is. We're not backing down because we don't get our feelings involved in telling you the truth. Yeah. And then it's like, it's over next time we talk. So I really like the the accountability that we have to one another. And I like the genuine, I feel like we have stayed connected. Like we always can feel when something is not right with the other. Mm -hmm. Either someone will say it to somebody else, like something's not right or something's going on. We, when you stay connected, you can feel those things. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I've known that we've always had, that we, we are accountable to one another. We don't back down. We don't care who's mad at who. Right. But we also stay connected and know when something's going on with the other, we know. That's good. Wow. And Kim? Um, I think I would say my advice would be is to forgive and let each other live through what they need to live through. And I say that because as we were coming up, yes, we were very close and intertwined. And that was the expectation for the house. You will be close. You're not going to just, you know, have a sister, don't even know her or don't talk to her. Mm -hmm. You will be close, but I don't think that we intentionally had the purpose or sought out that we're going to remain close all through life. It really was not like that. Yeah. It really was the manifestation of seeds that were put in us that just kind of started happening. In fact, right. I think all of us had the plan of we're going far, far away. Yeah. Everybody going far, far away. Mm -hmm. um, but as you grow and as you get older, allow yourself to experience your siblings for who they are because yes. when you're a child as you're a child you start to grow you start to develop you start to change and you start to transform and life transitions come and it can reveal size of a sibling that you're like wow i never knew that allow mm -hmm. that to happen mm -hmm. and that happen when you are able to forgive and let live through that you know real love that okay this let me forget yeah. yeah and really embrace that and take the time it takes time and effort to get to know people as they begin to grow and not only transform but reveal another side of them that's and it's good. like man i didn't even know you like that or i didn't even know you did that um, and as siblings you have to allow that to happen but also 
in effort intentionally chase that mm. that okay what are you up to now um, and I know a lot of families that with forgive when you don't have forgiveness that can't happen if right. you're stuck on the argument or the right. issue right. or what happened yeah. or that's true. little stuff like that you don't even get to know people as they grow and transition and transform you yeah. keep them in a box mm -hmm. so closeness doesn't mean you're in a box right. we don't feel stuck no, with yeah. each other no. it's never like well you my sister I guess I'm just stuck with you mm -hmm. like sometimes no I'm just kidding it's not like yeah. that <laughs> right it's not like that it really is a, you know, I need my family to want to be around my family. Yeah. So, yeah. It's something that I took, something that I took from that um, is just, you know, saying, you know, that you, you're not stuck together, mm -hmm. but you know what I'm saying? You know, you are going to be together. Yeah. And I love the thing, even what you said about living, uh, forgiving and living through, you know, Hey, I did not know you like that. Mm -hmm. And because we all change and just getting to know our siblings, um, you need to know our siblings more. Um, but I just want to thank um, the Davis family. And the well, some of them are married now. <laughs> um, but I just want to thank um, them for allowing me to um, be a part of their family. I'm married to Chris. Um, and yes, so. You are. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, oh, uh, hey, what a ship, girl. What a ship. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> thank them for well, allowing me. Allowing me to be a part of their family from the first time that I met them. Mama G allowed me to come in her kitchen with her and cook and yeah. them allow me to be a sister with them, cook with them, go places with them, talk to them. Um, and so they really do represent what family is. Yeah. They really do. And so if you are watching this or if you're coming back watching the replay, um, please make sure that you share this video because if you are watching this and if you're going to share this video, there are some nuggets that you can get from what we have talked about on today from servitude um, to laughing and being able to play with your family from learning each other, the differences from sticking together. Um, so many different values that you can learn in this society. And honestly, what we're going through right now in our nation, family, we have to stick together. Yes, family yes. really does yes. matter. Mm -hmm. And it was really pressed upon me that we did this show just to show people the love that their family exudes, the servitude that their family exudes, um, because it is what people need to see. And one of the things that I love about this family is that each, each child that they have birthed, that they have bore, is involved in ministry. They love God with all of their heart. They do. And even with their brother Rodney not being able to get on with, you know, some technical difficulties, they stay connected to him. He's still in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked to him yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're watching, we love you, bro. Yeah. Um, love you, and Rodney. Shamika is, you know, run, she's, you know, working, doing the things that she's doing, trying to provide for her son. Um, so I definitely appreciate you guys coming on and taking the time to sit here and divulge your family, the different things that you guys, you know, that you guys went through. So, um, and I also want to give a special shout out to my uh, media team, um, Heen and Tate. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping me set this up. Um, and um, my other brother, um, Frederick Connor, for helping set this up. Um, this has been an amazing show. This has been Candid Conversations with Coach D. You can join me every Thursday. It's either going to be Candid Conversations with Coach D, Cooking with Coach D. On Tuesdays, you have That Girl Runs. You can find me at Parallel Fitness, A Champion's Mindset, right here on Facebook. Or you can find me on Instagram, A Champion. A underscore a champion's mindset. Cool. Don't forget, I have released my first book, Motivational Wordplay. So please make sure that you go to my Facebook page. Find it somewhere on the Facebook page or on my Parallel Fitness page. You can go to Amazon, type in Demetria Davis. You can find it there as well. Or you can go to my website, www.getparallelfit.com. You can get the book and you can get the t-shirt. Um, and there's some amazing things that we have um, that they will all have going on. I know that Nakisha is coming with a book coming soon. Um, Bishop Tate already has a book. Um, he, has song. he has a second book coming up. I know that there are some amazing things that Kim and um, Angie will be doing. I know Jay is probably working on some stuff over there in California. Um, and Christopher Davis, um, he's a city councilman. And I know He's working, he get trying to get me to write his book. <laughs> um, but, right. But thank you everybody for watching. 
again, this has been thank Candid Conversations guys. with thank Coach D. Thanks for joining. Yes. Hi, Claude. Yeah, thank you, guys. Awesome. Of course. I love y'all. I had to let y'all go. Yes. Yes. high five. Uh. Remember this. Remember this. Even though, you know, I do a lot of stuff with fitness and I'm Coach D, it's not just a workout, but it is your life. Okay? Yes. Everything that you do affects you as some part of your life. Mm -hmm. So take this, what you've heard today, apply it to your life and keep going from there. We love you until I see love you again. You. It's been Chloe. Chloe. Hi, Chloe. 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 Love you, Facebook land. Come here. She took off. Oh, Come here. Bye, Chloe. Oh. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. 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 What? It ain't champ. I, it ain't champ. She the opposite. No, this ain't champ. It's not champ. Bye, Jay. Love y'all.